Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on the 25th day of January 2021. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. First graphic here is uh, has this weather graphic, and there are no watches, warnings, advisories, uh, no yellow, uh, tan, or, or orange. Ten, let's see, no watches, warnings, or advisories out anywhere in the state for the next, uh, oh, 24 hours or so, uh, tonight through tomorrow. So looking pretty good, but big storm bringing hurricane force wind warnings out to the western Aleutians. Uh, storms tonight and tomorrow bring uh, the hurricane force wind warnings into the southwest bearing in the Aleutians. But other than that, uh, in over the mainland, uh, pretty good through tomorrow, uh, although colder, temperatures uh, falling well below zero, even down into the Copper River Basin. Otherwise, uh, on the satellite imagery, we've got uh, a system driving eastward there. It's the south of Kodiak Island uh, that's pushed some clouds up over the island there. And another batch extends up along the southwest coast, kind of associated with a what was a stronger front, now just a trough with uh, areas of light precipitation, not really too significant. Any of the uh, precipitation amounts I, I saw when I was looking there and generally less than uh, water equivalent was about a hundredth of an inch and that was it. Uh, back up towards St. Lawrence Island, a little bit of moisture, uh, wind more of a factor there though. And uh, showers, rain or snow showers over the Bering Sea, mostly rain showers for the Fox Islands. Again, at light amounts. And then you can see the Cirrus, the Cirrus Shield associated with the uh, next big storm. Now just starting to spread into the western Aleutians there to the west of Adak and conditions drying out there over the southeast coast. Uh, gradually, still some lingering light shower activity, but uh, nothing too significant at all, with uh, showers a little more prevalent from the uh, eastern North Gulf Coast, light rain and snow showers into the, uh, and offshore there, and that's about it uh, as far as any precipitation with light snow falling much of the day, and you're into the afternoon at times for Yakutat, very light snow. They picked up about, uh, a hundredth of an inch water equivalent. Middleton Island had some light rain showers, about seven hundredths of an inch, and that was uh, about it. With the exception of Delta Junction, had about uh, maybe a quarter of an inch of snow, carrying light snow throughout the afternoon today, with uh, much lighter winds than what they have had. Otherwise, we had a system exit the northwest interior there, pull up toward Wrangell Island there. You can see the clouds uh, off with, uh, up that way, pulling away and then the band of clouds stretching across the northern Bering Sea. On the chart, we've got some uh, flat ridging of high pressure building in over the Aleutians and the southern Bering. Still a lot of moisture in that in the form of areas of light rain and snow. Uh, quite an extensive area there of light precipitation just west of the Pribilofs, where I'll be, well, be sliding in this evening and overnight tonight. Scattered rain and snow showers eastern Aleutians and uh, uh, windy conditions, winds diminishing this afternoon. Uh, along the Alaska Peninsula with snow and snow and rain. Uh, Cold Bay had a peak wind gust of 60 miles per hour, while Falls Pass had a peak wind gust of 71 miles an hour and a gust to 78 miles per hour, according to King Cove. Those earlier today already coming down, still gusting around uh, 50 miles, 50, 55 miles an hour, King Cove and Falls Pass, and about 40 miles an hour, Cold Bay. So that's all in a wind down mode there as that low pulls off to the east. Trying to spread some moisture up to Kodiak Island, maybe on the southern island, picking up a little bit, but not too much as it uh, pushes off to the east, diminishing showers over the Panhandle and northerly flow aloft, uh, bringing colder temperatures across all the eastern interior, back below zero this afternoon, or through the afternoon there in the Tanana Valley, temperatures running anywhere from five to 10 in the Copper River Basin. Those will fall well below zero tonight, minus 25, say a Gulcana tonight and uh, all the eastern interior, a couple of disturbances caught up in that flow may uh, kick off some clouds, flurries, or fog from the uh, upper Yukon Valley, Yukon Flats, uh, across the eastern Brooks Range, the eastern Bulverts Sea coast. But whatever it does fall will be quite light. Otherwise, 
storm warnings with that intense storm, 944 millibar low with a quite uh, tight pressure field around that center in advance of the front. So storm warnings moving into the western Aleutians tonight. Uh, otherwise, diminishing winds, high pressure uh, building ahead of that storm and beginning to shift eastward a little bit. Uh, still some snow shower activity over the northern Bering Sea. St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait, very light though, and maybe some flurries on the Yukon Delta coast. Continuing to dry out over the northern panel with tightening gradient. Gale, warrant, or gale force winds will begin to develop for Lincoln Island Glacier Bay. <clears throat> and for tomorrow, even some uh, channeled outflow winds along the North Gulf Coast uh, will begin to pick up uh, tomorrow with higher gusts, maybe 25, 30 knots, Prince William Sound out of the Copper River Delta. And again, gales in the panhandle, that Arctic high over the uh, Art Yukon there, and lower pressure down to the south, uh, kind of a tight gradient setting up over the uh, Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay area for uh, gusty winds. And uh, hurricane force wind warnings at 948 millibar low with uh, widespread area of rain moving into the western Aleutian Southwest Bering Sea and uh, storms ahead of the front. Uh, behind the front, probably will uh, fall back down toward minimum gales there as the front pushes eastward for the areas behind then pick back up dramatically with the main low center there. But that low is kind of moving off to the northeast, not making a big eastward push yet. But wind and rain will spread, gale force winds will spread into the Fox Islands and the Pribilofs in the afternoon. And then on Wednesday, uh, that front uh, pulls eastward and northeastward a lot faster than the low does, which actually pulls a little more to the northeast and north. So that'll have a weakening effect on that front. As you can see, the gradient really stretched out there ahead of it, especially from across Bristol Bay into Kodiak Island. But that'll spread some moisture, snow changing to rain, Kodiak Island, a mixture there, uh, snow pushing into Southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay, possibly mixing with uh, rain or sleet in the uh, afternoon hours. Whatever does fall looks pretty light at this point in time. Snow blowing snow tends to increase over the Southwest interior, St. Lawrence Island late in the day. Cold and windy for the Panhandle and uh, well below zero over the eastern and central and northern interior uh, throughout the entire day Wednesday. Lows for tonight, uh, upper teens north to upper 20s along the coast of the Panhandle. Zero to 15, Susitna, Manuska Valley, Kenai Peninsula, South Central Alaska in general, 22 Homer, 24 below the forecast low for Galkana. And uh, 22, 25 or maybe even 30 below there up over the northeast interior areas and out uh, mid-teens all the way out to the southwest coast, mid to upper teens, uh, Bristol Bay, near freezing for the western Alaska Peninsula, and much of the Aleutians, 30 to 33. Highs tomorrow staying below zero, Copper River Basin, McGrath, Nikolai, five below for your highs, and uh, upper teens, lower 20s, south central Alaska, Anchorage area, Palmer, Cook Inlet, and lower 20s, northern Panhandle, mid 30s along the coast and to the south. Below zero, north of the Alaska Range, all the way to the Arctic coast for your highs. And uh, near 40 for the Aleutians, mid 40s for Alaska, and then lows on Wednesday morning. Teens to 20s for the Panel, 30 below in the Copper River Basin, near zero or just above South Central Alaska. Well below zero up over the Northern Interior, 20 to 40 below, and uh, near freezing out over the Bering Sea. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic uh, for tomorrow morning. We've got uh, some marginal VFR, uh, north slope, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, VFR on the west side, much of the interior VFR. We've got some uh, IFR there in the Yukon Flats uh, due to lower clouds, fog, maybe some flurries, but good VFR right on down across the Alaska range to the North Gulf Coast and into the Gulf of Alaska, Panhandle VFR. Some marginal VFR there, Iliamna Lake, Kamishak Bay, and then the Aleutian Range area. And also right along the southwest coast there, but covering Nunavak Island up to uh, the south coast of St. Lawrence Island and the north shore of St. Matthew Island, VFR for the Perbloffs, Eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, big storm and IFR spreading in over the western and then central Aleutians. And by the afternoon, that uh, makes a pretty good jog to the east and northeast. Uh, IFR was spreading St. Ma Matthew Island uh, in the afternoon and even earlier for the Perbloffs and extending eastward right into Togiak Bay uh, to about uh, maybe Dillingham and back to Cape Newenham. And the western Aleutians still IFR behind the front, a zone of VFR into ADAC and eventually ATCA. 
Marshall VFR right off the east coast of Kodiak Island, otherwise VFR, remainder of the state, couple patches of some marginal VFR possible there around Eagle, either side of the Yukon River, and then on up uh, maybe toward the southeast of Brooks Range. And for the uh, morning time on Wednesday, could be some IFR or marginal VFR scattered along the Brooks Range, but still looking uh, really good for the North Slope Arctic Coast and all of the interior as well. A little more widespread area of marginal VFR and some IFR there over the uh, Porcupine Yukon River Flats area down now to the eastern Alaska Range with uh, northerly flow aloft. A couple of disturbances, weak disturbances coming southward. Uh, we'll lower the conditions there. Otherwise, uh, Gulf of Alaska marginal VFR and along the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula. Band of IFR with that uh, strong front, strong front that's weakening, uh, pushing into the eastern Bering Sea right up to the southwest coast, Alaska Peninsula. More IFR from Amchitka to Shimianat 2, and then that VFR zone, Atka over to Nikolsky, and just about into the Perbolofs in the morning. That'll shift through during the day and by afternoon back into the VFR for at least St. Paul, probably St. George as well. IFR along and just north of the Aleutians, central and western, into the Bering Sea to St. Lawrence Island. And a pretty good swath of uh, IFR now across all the southwest interior, including the Cuscombe Valley, and uh, crossing the uh, Alaska Range, covering Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, pushing up in Southern Cook Inlet, Seldovia, Homer, Kamishak Bay, Kachemak Bay. Uh, IFR not quite making it to the foreland, staying VFR northern Cook Inlet all the way to the Arctic coast. Marginal VFR over the eastern or eastern Arctic, I'm sorry, eastern North Gulf Coast, uh, Cape Yakutaga, maybe Cordova, but not to Yakutat stays VFR for the Panhandle. And uh, Anatovic tomorrow and Anagan VFR flying for both passes and uh, Lake Clark and Merrill also VFR for rainy. All the Brooks Range and Alaska Range passes will be VFR for the day Tuesday, and for Mentasta, VFR, Tanita, also VFR, Portage, looking good, VFR there as well, and Chilkoot and White, VFR for next couple of days. Freezing levels at the surface along the coast of the Panhandle, hugging the North Gulf Coast as it uh, mostly does this time of year, right on down into Bristol Bay, north of the Perbloff, south of St. Matthew Island, and warmer air nudging up toward the Aleutians, two to 4,000 feet along and just to the north, six to 8,000 feet just to the south. Icing, uh, areas of uh, light to considerable moderate rime icing, a pretty good area there with that big storm coming in, pushing eastward and northeastward into the Fox Islands, Perbolofs, and then hanging back over the western Aleutians, icing free for the remainder of the state. And the jet stream, uh, tomorrow that uh, intense storm coming into the western Aleutians, southwest bearing, 140 knots southwest jet into the central Aleutians, uh, ridging kind of a uh, uh, migrating ridge. So we've got uh, northwest or west northwest become northwest, uh, 100 to 125 knots there from the Bering Strait across the Seward Peninsula, right on down across Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula. And northerly flow, cold northerly flow, eastern Arctic coast, all the way down into the uh, Yakutat area. And 9,000 feet uh, northerly winds, not too bad there. They could be stronger, but really strong winds out over the western Bering and Aleutians, up to 80 knots, even at 3,000 feet. Turbulence-wise, uh, mechanical turbulence there for the uh, Eastern Copper River Basin, Lincoln Glacier Bay, North Gulf Coast, and severe turbulence of the Western Aleutians. It can be many miles long, from 1 to 100 feet high, traveling at 400 miles per hour. This ocean monster is known as a tsunami, and it can wreak havoc on coastal populations and landscapes. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves caused by any large and sudden disturbance of the sea surface. Tsunamis can be generated by landslides, volcanic eruptions, or even meteorite impacts in the ocean, but they are most often caused by an earthquake where there's a sudden displacement of the ocean floor. When that happens, there's a transfer of energy from the sea floor to the ocean, causing waves on the surface to radiate outward in all directions. In deep waters, these waves may not even be detectable. But when the tsunami enters shallower waters, the wave speed slows and its height increases. The water along the coast may recede noticeably. A large wall of turbulent water, called a bore, may also form. When the tsunami hits, 
It may come ashore like a fast-rising flood and strike with devastating force. The series of waves may continue for hours. The first one may not be the last or the largest. For your safety, know the potential warning signs of an incoming tsunami. A strong earthquake that causes difficulty standing. A rapid rise or fall of the water along the coast. A loud ocean roar. When you're in a coastal area, it's important to keep alert for messages from local officials, such as lifeguards, police, the U.S. Tsunami Warning Centers, and NOAA All Hazards Radio. If you find yourself in a location of a tsunami strike, here's what you need to do to stay safe. Keep calm. Walk or run to higher ground, 100 feet above sea level or one mile inland. Do not drive. Keep roads open for emergency vehicles. If you cannot move to higher ground, use the stairs to get to the third floor or higher in a sturdy building. Follow all instructions from local officials and stay out of coastal areas until authorities issue an all clear. Tsunamis can strike any coastline in the world and can affect locations thousands of miles away from where they formed. They may be uncommon, the devastation they cause makes them a deadly force in nature. For more information on tsunamis, go to the following sites. Tsunami, a killer wave, speeding across the ocean at 400 miles an hour. It smashes into land, destroying everything in its path. Tsunamis do not have a season, but they can strike any coast at any time. If one forms close to the shore, the shaking of the earth and a loud roar may warn of its approach. But when a tsunami forms across the ocean, it can take hours to reach the shore. Enough time to warn people to move to higher land. Over the past 20 years, NOAA has developed DART, a real-time monitoring system that provides data for forecasting tsunamis. The DART systems have been deployed in earthquake-prone areas throughout the ocean, including the Pacific and Indian basins. A DART system combines a surface buoy and a sensor on the ocean floor. This sensor detects changes in water pressure and seismic activity and transmits the data back to the surface. If these changes indicate a tsunami may form, the buoy signals an alert via satellite to the tsunami warning centers in Alaska and Hawaii. Back at the centers, scientists plug the data into pre-existing models. These models predict the height, the arrival time, and the coastal locations that the tsunami will hit. Watches and warnings are issued to the affected communities so preparations can begin. Today, 47 DART stations are positioned all around the world, ready to detect and warn coastal communities about the next potential tsunami. With the DART system and tsunami warning centers in place, we are now better prepared to predict the killer wave before it strikes. December 26, 2004. What began as an undersea earthquake in the Indian Ocean ended as the most deadly tsunami in recorded history, with nearly 240,000 lives lost. This was a devastating wake-up call to coastal communities and tsunami research. Prior to this event, only six of NOAA's Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting of Tsunami, or DART, buoys were in place. Scientists could only predict tsunami arrival times, not flood potential. 
and there was not a global tsunami warning system. Today, 10 years later, we can tell a different story. U.S. and international coastlines are far better prepared for such a catastrophe, thanks in large part to research and technology developed at the NOAA Center for Tsunami Research at Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory. NOAA's DART array is now complete, with 39 buoys operated by the National Weather Service's National Data Buoy Center. Along with 21 international buoys, this array can measure a tsunami wave as small as one centimeter in the open ocean and provide these data in real time to forecast when a tsunami may hit the coast and how much flooding there will be. NOAA scientists and engineers are currently testing the fourth generation DART buoy that will be able to measure local tsunamis as well as distant ones. Flooding forecast models incorporate local topography and historical tsunami data in order to more accurately predict exactly how a tsunami might behave when it reaches shore. NOAA has 75 site-specific models that can provide high-resolution flooding forecasts for effective response and mitigation during a tsunami event. NOAA has gathered data from every tsunami since 2004 to improve its forecast models. Today, it operates the world's only real-time tsunami flooding forecast system using DART data to accurately compute flooding forecasts. The NOAA Tsunami Warning Centers make tsunami data available on the Internet and issue advisories, watches and warnings through the Emergency Alert System and via NOAA weather radios. While it is impossible to prevent a tsunami, we are now much better prepared to detect them and predict their paths and impacts so those in coastal communities can take the steps necessary to safely protect themselves. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, looking at uh, sea ice analysis for today. Not a lot of change here from yesterday, or not really any big day-to-day uh, -day changes that are noticeable on, a, on this type of a graphic, but it uh, looks like a little bit more ice maybe south of the forelands in Cook Inlet, otherwise still north shore of uh, St. Matthew Island on the heavier ice with the thinner ice a little farther to the south and southwest. And uh, not much change in the next uh, few days, uh, unless the winds increase out of the east-northeast. Anyway, for coastal water forecast for the panhandle along the coast, uh, uh, central south coast, northeast 20 knots, north coast, small craft advisories, northeast to 30 knots. Gale warnings for Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay, northwest 40 knots, eight foot sea, small craft advisories, uh, Stevens Passage, north of 25, Clarence Strait, north 15. And for Wednesday, northerly gales continue for Lincoln Canal and the northern inside channels at 40 knots with 8-foot seas. And Stevens Passage, north 30 knots, 20 knots for Clarence Strait. Small craft advisories there for north to northeast winds, 25 knots on the uh, south coast. The north coast, northeast, 25 to 30 knots, seas 10 feet. And Prince William Sound. Tuesday, northerly winds, 15 knots, seas three feet, and Cook Inlet, uh, pretty light out of the north, not too bad, 10 to 15 knots, but 30 knots uh, for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay out of the northwest, 15 knots for the western North Gulf Coast, north 20, and outflow northerly gusts at 35 knots there for the eastern North Gulf Coast, especially the Copper River Delta, seas at eight feet. Outlook for Wednesday, Northern Cook Inlet, North 15, seas four feet, small craft advisory, Southern Cook Inlet for Northeasterlies at 25 knots, Northeast 20 knots for Kamishak Bay, Southeast 20 for the Barren Islands, four foot seas, and uh, not too bad wind-wise or sea height-wise for the North Gulf Coast, East at 15, seas four feet, Prince William Sound, light Northeasterlies at 10 knots, seas two feet. Kodiak Island, small craft advisories tomorrow, west-northwest, 25 to 30 knots. It's going to act to Castle Cape, northwest, 30 knots, seas 12 feet. And then 15-knot winds from Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev there, uh, uh, 15 knots with 11-foot seas. Small craft advisories there for the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, southeast at 25, northwest, 25, Bristol Bay. Wednesday, Bristol Bay, southeast, 25 knots, seas 5 feet. And the Alaska Peninsula, 
southwest 30 knots, seas 14 to 17 feet. In fact, 30 knot winds there all the way from Cape Sarachev uh, up to Sitkanak from the southwest and south 25 knots east side of Kodiak. For uh, Fox Islands tomorrow on Alaska Island, southeast winds increasing to 40 knots, southeast winds increasing to 50 knots uh, uh, later in the afternoon for Unmak Island and high end or good storm warnings definitely for Adak and Atka, especially in advance of the front. 55 knots out of the southeast. Hurricane force wind warnings. Amchitka, Kiska, Shimi, and Atu. 65 knots from the south southeast with 48 to 54 foot sea heights. And then uh, those fall back to just 50 knots on Wednesday, coming down to uh, minimum storms there for the western Aleutians, west southwest, and at 50 knots with 32 to 37 foot seas. 45 to 50 knot winds, Adak and Atka out of the southwest, and on Alaska Island, southwest 35, Unmak Island, west southwest of 40. Southwest coast tomorrow, east 15 to 20 knots, but gales coming into the Pribilof Island, southeast 40 seas building to 10 feet, east 25, St. Matthew Island, northeast 25, brisk wind advisories there for St. Lawrence Island. And those will turn into gales on Wednesday out of the east of 40 knots, St. Lawrence Island, uh, Yukon Delta Coast, southeast 30 knots, south 30 knots there. Cuscombe Delta Coast, Nunavik Island, and the Pribilof Southwest 30, but seas 22 feet, southeast 40 for St. Matthew Island. For the uh, central and eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, uh, north to northeast or east northeast at 5 to 10 knots, pretty light, east 15 on the west side, 10 to 15 knot winds from uh, averaged out to the north, northeast to northwest uh, from Cape Beaufort to Wales. And for Wednesday, Wales to Cape Thompson, northeast winds 20 knots. 25 knots, uh, brisk wind advisories from Cape Thompson to Cape Beaufort, and northeast 20 on the western Arctic coast, central and east coast, 10 to 15 knots out of the east. For tonight, uh, storm system stays to the south of the panhandle, we'll lose the rain and snow showers eventually, and the skies will continue to clear, leading to colder and windier, especially north. Big intense storm comes into the uh, Bering Sea and western Aleutians with an active cold front that weakens but holds together enough to push some moisture into the southwest interior Kodiak Island and southern Cook Inlet with warmer temperatures and windy over, or just uh, storm rages, but slowly weakens out over the Bering Sea and uh, cold and dry over the Panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.